Okay, friends, subscribers, and all you YouTubers. Okay, what I've got for you here is I've got um, an update on the Rogue Planetoid, uh, which I actually believe could even be a controlled object. Um, as I noticed in the core two images, um, at the very start, as you notice, it, there are three definite course corrections to the direction of it. And by actually using a 106 centimeter screen, I actually placed a, um, a circular drawing of possible orbits on the thing, but following the actual orbit of the, the thing, tracking it bit by bit, slowly by slowly, just putting dots, then actually connecting it together. And I noticed three co um, definite changes in the actual um, orbitation um, of the actual planet. It's not our moon, okay? It's going far too close to the sun to be a, our moon, okay? Anybody that thinks it's our moon, you're having yourself on, okay? Um, you've only got to look at the next image, which is the um, core two images, and they can tell you straight away that it's not our uh, sun. So by looking at this, now this is what I followed. I had this on a 106 centimeter screen, and you'll notice the, the course corrections are in that very first uh, section up to about now was the last course change um, and you'll notice it's like a little S zig zigging and zagging until it gets it right um, in other words it's not a proper orbit and then as it comes around it comes up to the Sun then all of a sudden there's a sharp turn to the right and it's not in an orbital path now but as it comes out as if it's going into a settled orbit, but then it changes at the very end again. So there is a definite change to this. I had the, luckily I've got the large screen that was enabled me to actually follow it and draw an actual orbital path. Um, and yet I noticed there were directional changes and those directional changes means, hence it's not a real orbit. So you've got to look at what's going on. You've got to put the evidence in front of you when you look at these things, folks. And that's all I do, is I put the evidence in front of myself, I look at what I've got, and I put the images direct, no modifications to the images unless it's been a zoom image, okay? And that's all I do, I'll do a zoom. Now you'll notice those flashes of the screens, they're actual real solar events snapped and caught by the Core 2 camera. Anything you see on the Core 1 are snapped and caught by the Core 1 camera. In the Core 1 images though, there are a couple of um, images that I put in at the end of it, which are blow-ups, which you can stop the screen at any time, but rather than sort of make them separate, I've left it so that uh, basically you can come back and just zoom, on, zoom in on those and just look at them and stop the screen and everything. But um, yeah, just a bit of thing to keep you involved and start you in the research. But the thing is, when you look at an image, you've got to look at the image and you've got to be scientific about it. You can't just say, hey, look, um, this is what I think. Um, you've got to truly go and you've got to do some study. I, like with this image, like I spent, oh, most probably the other video has been out for over a week now and it's now only coming up with the second image out there. And it's because I've been looking at the orbital path of this object. Because I had a greater field to look at, I was able to say, okay, maybe this could be a controlled object. Because the orbit is not really an orbit. It's like a flight path that's changing. Now, to make those assumptions, I simply plotted it out on my TV screen, which is a 106 centimeter screen. Had it full blown on the screen, and I just followed it, and I had it really slow, and every time, every new screen, I put a dot. Every new screen, I put a dot. Every new screen, I put a dot, and just kept on doing it, and eventually it showed me a complete orbital path. It took five hours to do image by image, dot by dot. But the thing is, I got an orbital path of it. And if you're going to do it, make sure you don't use a permanent marker like I did accidentally. I didn't look what I, what I was using, and it took me a while to clean my TV screen. But the thing is, I knew that I did not have a true orbital path. I knew I had directional changes. Now those directional changes can only be accounted to one thing. Either extreme, oh sorry, two things. Extremely strong solar winds, uh, because it is getting extremely close to our sun. But it also could be a simple fact that it's actually being controlled. 
Um, now, you've got to remember that white ring is the size of our sun. Look at the size of this planet. That's not the moon. That's too big. That's at least four to five times the size of Jupiter. And um, I also got a threatening letter in regard to my uh, rogue video telling me not to, to stop scaring people. In other words, they're trying to scare me out of the archive. But they'll never do that, okay? I put the truth out, and I believe the public have the truth. It didn't scare me when I found it. I was actually quite excited to know that one of my theories. Now, in that first section here is where you notice the small course changes. Um, because it's coming in from one angle, the angle changes, so hence it can't be a real orbit. Okay, so and I challenge you to sit it down, put it on the biggest screen that you can put, do frame by frame, and pause it, pause it, pause it, pause it, or download the images for yourself and go through one image after another on your view screen and put it up, and you'll find out you do not have a true orbital path. Okay. And the fact that it's orbiting on this side of the sun says it's not one of our planets. Okay, the position and the, or, the, the almost orbital path puts it in an incorrect path for our moon, and it's going too close to our sun. It's considering it's four to five times the size of Jupiter, it can't be our moon. So basically, it says, okay, a rogue planet. Now, rogue planets in our atmosphere and sorry, in our in our solar system happen okay and most probably have been happening for billions of years rogue stars happen every day okay and i tell everybody in every video go back and re review my moving stars videos because our stars move so why can't our planets move um so there's something going on now we get secondary suns all the time and I've actually just gathered some evidence which I'm going to be putting out in one of my next few videos in regard to the fact that our sun, I have physical evidence of our sun being propelled, propelling itself like all the others with the same remnants of all the other stuff that I have in my videos. I have actual evidence, NASA evidence, that proves our sun just did it at the same time our New Zealand and all the other quakes happened. So in other words, our star was responsible for all the earthquakes because our star moved. And we travel with our stars. That's what shook it. And you've only got to look at that slight change in that path to know, okay, well, that's a rogue planet. It's fairly large. These things happen, okay? There's the only way we're going to advance as a, as a race, as a, as a race in space, is we're going to have to start accepting that our planet does weird things, our st sun does weird things, and we do not even understand the universe in an infinitesimal amount yet. We are still infants. There are craft and beings out there that I have showed you in my other videos that make us look like a microbe. And I mean, we are a microbe. For them to look at us, they need a microscope. We look at life forms every day through microscopes. So why can't there be life forms that look at us through a micros microscopic? Because we think we're the centre of the universe because we've got intelligence. Well, I can tell you now, if you think that we are the centre of the universe, you have no intelligence, okay? If you truly think that we are the centre of the universe, we are the only life forms in space, I'm sorry, but... You have no intelligence whatsoever. If you think there's no UFOs out there, you have no intelligence. You, if you think that when God comes, he's going to come on the clouds. Um, he might come with clouds. Yeah, I believe in God and with all my heart. And trust me, I'm a firm believer in God. But if you think it's going to be anything like the pictures that were painted in the past, you've got no intelligence. You need to start realising... Our God may have been a being from another world, but somewhere along the line, there is truth out there. And the only way the truth is going to come out is if everybody starts looking at the truth. Use government facilities. Use what facilities they do give us access to to start getting the truth like this out there, folks. You've got to get the truth out. 
for people and mankind to start understanding the universe. The only reason I become a solar researcher was because I started seeing these beautiful images and I thought, well, I wonder if I can go and have a look at their telescope. And I had a look at the telescope and you don't have to actually physically be part of NASA to look at their images. So you can start researching and by looking at the images you find stuff like this. And then after a while you start to realise what our sun does. Now, take away all their so-called degrees, okay, which tell them they've got to do this and they've got to do that. You're actually better off without a degree when it comes to doing this sort of stuff because they truly don't know what the sun is made out of, okay? They truly don't know what other planets are made out of. They truly don't know how other planets do work. If they do, they have outside knowledge, okay? But they're not telling you and they're not teaching it in the colleges, Okay, you need to look at hard, cold, heavy evidence. Look at it. This is evidence. Every little image you're seeing there is real. This is what our sun does. This is what our solar system does. This is what our universe does through the eyes that the governments have provided us with. We now can look at the same stuff. We now can come to our own conclusions. I have noticed magnetic interference. You can just see a little bit of it in this video down to the right hand corner and like ripples in the light. I have actually got hours of evidence of that actually happening in real time. Something is causing it. I'm still trying to work that one out. But it's only because I get out there and I look, folks, and I try my hardest and I do what I can to bring you the truth. But when it comes to rogue planets and everything, this is definitely either a rogue planet, but I, either something is interfering with its orbital path because it's coming in one direction, changes, then it comes back into another direction, changes, then it straightens up, I mean, it's straightening up here, right here, then it changes in again when it turns around. So there's something wrong with that orbit path. It's not a true orbit. So, hence, something's controlling it or it's being manipulated by the forces of the sun. So it's definitely, and the size of that planet, it truly is about five, about five times the size of Jupiter, just casually coming through our solar system as if nothing had happened. Okay, you know, we don't get told about this shit, but we should. Right, we're not going to panic. The reason why people panic it's because the government do cover shit up like this. And they think, OK, if they were more informed, and I believe that we are becoming more informed, if people became more informed, there'd be less panic out there in the universe. So look, folks, there's nothing to worry about about this one. It's already come and gone, so don't worry about it. But I do believe it could have had something to do with a lot of our disasters. OK, so look, all I can say is have a nice time. Look into the information yourself. Anthony Avery signing off once again with the truth.